G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to a bit of an aquaponic update. Today's clip, I'm going to be looking at some pests crawling around the Kangkong behind me here. Also bring you along and show you how the plants have reacted to the iron that I've been adding to the system and we'll check the iron levels as well. Also give you a look at some solids that are collecting in places where they shouldn't be around the system. And yeah, a bit of a issue they're causing with the pH and trying to keep that nice and level. So before we get cracking though, if you haven't subscribed already, hit that little subscribe button down there and you'll be notified whenever I upload a clip on the aquaponics or something else around the backyard farm. And you can come along and say good day if you want in the comment section below. To begin with though, we might have a bit of a quick look at how the uh, fish took their pellets this morning, a bit of a chat about them, and then we'll move on down to the pH and a few of the issues we've been having. So the silver perch seem to be travelling along all right. I have cut their feed back a fair bit because we're in winter here at the moment, although we do have a uh, week full of 31 degree days ahead, so these guys will probably start snapping at the feed a little bit more readily. Uh, this morning I only dropped in probably around about quarter what they'd normally get, and they polished it off in no time flat. So as far as I'm concerned, they're doing okay. I haven't dropped the camera in this morning. It's just sitting on top of the tank there. So once I'm done filming here, I'll pop it in. And um, yeah, you guys can check it out at the end of the clip if you want to see how they're going. On to the rest of the system. Well, we might have a look at the pH and the solids issue first. Normally the pH in this system sits between 6.5 and 6.8, and I do dose it up fairly regularly with some calcium hydroxide. But over the last, um, probably about the last month or so, we've started to see a steady rise in the pH. And now we've got it sitting between 7.3 and 7.4. It does fluctuate a bit. So when your pH starts to rise out of nowhere in a backyard system like this, it's generally one of two things. Either you've got some media with carbonate in it in your grow beds, you've used the wrong sort of rock, and that is slowly adding more um, alkalinity to the water, or it could be a situation like mine where I have a feeling I have too many deposits in the grow beds and that is causing denitrification and as the, um, the waste denitrifies back to ammonia slowly it does tend to um, add some extra alkalinity to the water. I was thinking that it could have been a build up in the bottom of the biofilter so I gave it a good clean out the other day. So generally most people don't use a biofilter um, like I've got here, a standalone one. Uh, the grow beds with media in them, they're basically a biofilter and they look after all of the um, processing of the ammonia and nitrite. I've got a standalone one because I did have more fish in the fish tanks than the grow beds could process the waste from. So that's why I've got one. Anyway, with this um, biofilter, you can see a couple of bits of plumbing going in down the side. That one there is a cap and that one there is a cap. They're holes that aren't being used. But down in there I have a venturi. Now that venturi sends water and air that gets mixed with it into the biofilter and churns all the media inside. Now down below the venturi, the water tends to be a little bit more still. So any solids that make it through my radial flow filter into the biofilter can get deposited out down the bottom. Now, uh, the other thing is that the bacteria on the media in there, also as they die off and produce waste, that becomes a solid mass as well, and some of that will precipitate out down the base too. So the other day, I decided that I needed to clean out the system to make sure that none of this muck in this filter in particular was causing me problems. So what I did was turned the uh, water off into the fish tank. I've got a couple of air stones in there, so they were getting more than enough air. I just left the water running in through the venturi and kept the media churning and then scooped it all out using my little basket there into a barrel so I could basically get access to the bottom of the filter and see what sort of muck was in there. Now, when I got down that far, there was a load, probably about um, seven centimetres. I'd say it came up close to the level of the venturi going into the base there of muck. So even though there was a lot of muck in there, it wasn't very stinky, it didn't smell very anaerobic. So obviously the amount of air running through the venturi and circulating through the system there stopped that from turning anoxic or anaerobic. So there was no denitrification happening at that point there as far as I could tell. So when all the media was out and I just cleaned out the majority of the muck from down the bottom, it was a great opportunity to actually fix a drain fitting in there. It just wasn't pushed onto the pipe well enough. I went in head first, hurt my back a bit, but yeah, I fixed that up. Now, the reason a lot of the solids have passed through the radial flow to the biofilter 
and then on down through to the rest of the system and eventually the grow beds is because I was a bit crook with a bad back last year. It's still playing up on me somewhat. So I couldn't actually physically bend down and um, uh, clean out the radial flow filter. And it was at a point where the girls couldn't uh, help me much in the patch either. They did do it a few times, but nowhere near as regularly as it should have been done. So that's basically how I've ended up in this mess. So I'm going to go for a bit of a wander around the system and we'll come back next to the sump tank there and I'll give you a bit of an explanation as to where I think the solids are going in the system. So Lizzie and I are just down here at the sump tank and I wanted to show you the flow of the water. So this pipe here comes out and then down around here this hose work and it tees off here. Now this section of the hose here then goes back to that grow bed that stands out by itself. Now the rest of the line then goes along till we get to another tee here. There it splits off for this grow bed here and the other two on the walkway around the other side. Then the hose work goes straight through to the end barrel there where I have a feeling a lot of the solids are being deposited. Basically what we've got is a clear run all the way through to that barrel so it's going to be the path of least resistance. With these tees being here I dare say that slows the movement down from it going out to those grow beds and the same um, just down here as well. What I'm actually going to do is um, isolate this bed from the system for the time being and we'll remove the bottom drain that flows underneath the beds and we'll see if we can see any evidence of solids depositing there. So here we go folks, prepared to see me get very wet I think. So there we go. I don't know if you can make out the colour of that, but it is fairly brown. Especially out of the first one <laughs> and you can probably make out this root mass as well. Smells a little bit bad but not over the top. So there's a few solids in the water there but it, it's nothing drastic. It really doesn't smell that bad at all. So they really weren't as bad as I expected. Um, it's a bit of a shock to see this amount of root come through the bottom drain here, but I suppose that's to be expected. So I do think that this requires more investigation. Like I said, I'm not going to do it today, but I will bring you along when I take the media out of these barrels, just to give you a bit of a look at the process and see what I find. I've also been going around the beds and just randomly um, pulling out small handfuls from down fairly deep. And I'm not really getting a lot of um, putrid rank smell, so no anaerobic zones. I am getting like a little bit of solids, as you can see on my finger there. But they're more probably um, bits of worm castings and things like that. So I'm fairly certain it's none of the three beds around the sump tank. It's either going to be the satellite bed with the tomatoes and malabars in it, or the barrels that we just had a look at. So these barrels are all back together, and they're flowing again. I was rather surprised by the length of that root out of that end one, but I suppose looking at the size of this Warrigal Greens, it's to be expected. Uh, which leads me on nicely to the iron update. Now, as you can see, these leaves are looking 200% on what they were during the iron clip when I was showing you how deficient the system was. They're looking absolutely marvellous. I am still having a few concerns with this hoe and knock up the back here. It's still not really um, picking up, so I'm fairly sure that there's another issue involved there. I have also been feeding up with potassium in the system. I'll give you a bit of a look at that in a tick. But yeah, as for the iron, I think we've pretty much all got it under control. I brought the little test around to give you a bit of a look. So just to give you a bit of a look, it's a bit hard with the sunlight at the moment, but it is above one part per million or one milligram per litre. I haven't had it fall below the um, 0.5 milligrams per litre yet, so I am pretty happy with that. And as you saw by the, um, the Warrigal Greens behind it there, they have reacted very well. So it's just a matter of me checking it every week just to see where it's going. And yeah, it really only takes about five minutes, if that, to do the test and treat the system. So as you can see, the rest of the system's looking fairly green at the moment. I'll take you around and show you the tomatoes over in the other bed. But all these leafy greens are looking very nice indeed. The lettuces have definitely picked up. Now one thing I just wanted to show you on my walk back around to the other grow bed is some of the weeds we get in the system here. Now down in here we have a Chinese Celtus. Now this is one that's been dropped in by a bird. Uh, they've just dropped the seed in. Over here we have what I think is a, I think they call it a Kadaji tree. Uh, one of my mates who builds guitar pointed that out. G'day Mr Mark. 
So yeah, that's another one that's just grown in the system by itself. And here we have, um, not too sure what this one is. It's actually got rather nasty spines on the leaves itself. So there's this one here and there's one in the other grow bed. Um, not 100% sure how these guys got deposited in here, mainly because we have the um, bird netting over the top. So whether a bird's actually landed in the system and pooped out the seeds, I'm not too sure. The only weeds we really get in the system are things like these lettuces that are going to seed at the moment. They'll drop a few seeds in there and we've had the same thing happen with basil and also this flat leaf Italian parsley down the bottom. But other than that, we really don't have any um, weed issues in aquaponics. So it was a bit of a shock to find this trio in here the other week. I thought I'd leave them in there just to show you in a clip. And just through here, you can see how well the celtus is going. This one's actually used as a um, stem vegetable. The uh, Chinese chop all the leaves back. You can eat them like a salad green, but they're actually grown for the stems. We took one out the other night. It was actually very tough and very bitter. So I don't know if that's the result of a few of the deficiencies we've had in the system, but the leaves themselves, we just break off two or three of these and throw them in with the um, other lettuce screens and Okinawan spinach and that from the system. The lettuce over in this bed is gone absolute gangbusters. This is some of mum's volunteers that she brought around for me to plant out. They're a variety they just have popping up everywhere. So we're going to pull one or two of these out this week. And what I'll be doing is I'm um, using that space there to house plants from the barrel over the back there. It'll just give them somewhere to live while I'm cleaning out that system. The tomatoes up the back here are doing well. We've already harvested a number from the plant in the bed behind me here. As you can see, we do have a bit of a disease issue here. Don't we, Lizzie? We certainly do. I have been fairly diligent and cut a lot of them off, but I have missed a few. But yeah, I'd say we're going to have another three or four tomatoes come off this week. And we are seeing more uh, flowers come through. So hopefully it was part of the iron deficiency and also the potassium. Uh, just quickly, just to show you how I'm adding the potassium. It's pretty basic. I'm using this product here. It's called Eco Seaweed. It's got um, nutrient rich with 16% potassium. So I figured that a couple of spoonfuls of this in each grow bed once every couple of weeks is slowly bringing up the um, potassium levels. Unfortunately, potassium testing kits aren't that cheap, so it's not something I can just run out and buy. So I'm sort of um, just winging it at the moment as far as the potassium levels are going. Now onto this cancong and the pest on it. Now, I didn't really notice it for a while. Uh, this plant here has pretty much all been left alone because there's a load of seeds down the bottom and I've been trying to um, not harvest from down there because I would like to collect the seeds. But up the top here, you can probably make out on the leaves that they're looking a little bit pockmarked. What I found here is we've got some what look like spider mites and two spotted mites. I don't know how well this is turning out for you guys, but there's a little bit of webbing uh, in between the leaf there where it's been joined together. But you do tend to see the little pockmarks and the damage to the leaves before that, I've noticed. With the other mites in the patch, I've been using a product called Eco Oil. It was put out by the same people who do the Eco Seaweed. Um, oils aren't generally recommended for um, a lot of use in aquaponics, mainly because they can, if they get into the water in large enough quantities, coat the gills of the fish, so I've read, which stops them from being able to absorb oxygen. Some of the recommended sprays I've seen are things like um, the alcohol sprays, um, something I haven't used yet, diatomaceous earth is another thing that people have used. I'll probably just end up pulling this plant out and you never know, it might help with the anaerobic problems we're having with the grow beds. I'm, I'm not too worried about collecting seeds from it at this stage. I was hoping that um, they'd be enough that I could share them around, but seeing as the plants don't look like they're going to die back this winter because it's been so mild, I can just take a cutting from the other plant over there and I can start off a new one for this coming summer's crop. So really no big deal, but yeah, do need to get on top of these mites because if they spread elsewhere through the patch, they're just going to devastate it. So I do hope you've enjoyed this little bit of an update, folks, on, you know, a couple of stuff ups going on around the patch and a bit of a look at some of the other plants. I will keep you updated as to what's going on with the denitrification of the, um, the system and the grow bed in general. If you would like to be kept up to date and you're not a subscriber, all you need to do is click on that little subscribe button down there and once you click the notification box, you'll be sent a message every time I upload a clip here to YouTube. You can come along and suss it out. I do hope you're all well and happy and that your systems are booming and your gardens as well. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers all, have a top one.
This little fella lost his mate during the filming of today's episode, another casualty for the cause.